Hey guys, today we're actually going to be talking about the number one skill that I think is valued to learn to do two things. One, avoid the death march, and two, make you get those large salary increases that a lot of junior developers are looking to go um, and go from junior to senior, those you know, those five-figure uh, digit increases, those 20, 30, 40% raises, the ones that are really going to stand out and that you want to ramp up as quickly as possible. And uh, avoiding the death march so you can get there is just as crucial. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I want to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. Dev Mountain has various programs from iOS development to UI UX, full stack web development, and quality assurance. I actually had the pleasure of visiting one of their campuses about two years ago in Provo when they still had a location there. And it was a fantastic experience just to be able to meet everybody, see the campus, and it one thing that's unique about them is they actually include housing with their tuition. So if you're interested, check the link in the description below. So the skill that I'm referring to generally is testing. That may surprise some people. You know, oftentimes people are like, you gotta learn this hot tip and trick and this and that, the latest framework. Nope. Uh, you just have to know testing. Um, unit testing, the B part, uh, is a great place to start. And usually enough, it's really the... so. And then you can talk about integration testing and end testing, the whole deal. It is one of the ways to find out if a company values its developers. Why do I say that? Well, oftentimes, most senior devs or most pe people who have worked long enough in the industry will, will know the value of testing, but it's the business who will push back against it. And when they, ch when they don't like when every minute isn't developing features and they can't wrap their mind around it, what it usually means is that the organization doesn't respect their development team and doesn't understand. And um, this is more common than you think. In fact, uh, the worst jobs I have had uh, were the ones where they didn't understand or believe in testing or didn't let devs do testing. And there's been countless studies showcasing its value. And I'm not one of those people that are going to sit here and tell you that you need to have an app 100% tested. Would that be ideal? Yeah, but we don't, we don't live in an ideal world. But the reason testing exists is so that you can easily debug things so that you're not releasing more bugs into production so that, that uh, when you leave and a new developer comes in or vice versa, they have a place to see where you're at, what, what, why some piece of code exists uh to target edge cases um i've i've been on teams where before we got the test suite up and running i quite literally had to fix a bug three or four times in a two-week period um it's not a good look <laughs> in that sense but testing is one of those items that will if you are during the interview process if during your um during your interview process of them and their interview process of you if you are uh, making an emphasis upon this, you'll be able to find out what they value. And my personal opinion is that a, a tech lead or a senior dev that you are going to be learning from, if they put a high emphasis on testing, then it is a more quality development spot. And if they don't, it oftentimes means the business is, <laughs> is moving so fast and on such a death march that anything that they think is going to slow them down, which in reality it doesn't, but that's not, that's their perception is that there's no time for it. Write code, write code, write code. And that, that is a death march. You don't want that. But what ends up happening when you do have the skill and you run into somebody who values that is that your, your stock goes up, your value goes up and you are a significantly higher valued asset because so few developers value testing and it's not that they value did not value it that's probably a poor way of wording it one of the like you know when you you're like like a lot a lot of junior developers i didn't like take myself for instance i didn't know testing was a thing period like like oh you test your code right you click through it uh, that's how i test it what are you talking about um i i I didn't know unit testing, integration testing, and end testing, a whole 
whole shebang was a thing until I was already a developer. So what I end up discovering as I as I have continued to fall in love with testing and think it's one of the best things that you can do is one a couple things. One, um, few and far between develop. If I was to give a number, about one third of developers are very pro testing, about two thirds are not. Um, so that one third, you're gonna rise to the top of the the pool and. Oftentimes, that makes you a better developer. Now, we can talk about TDD, which is test-driven development, which is how you, one way of approaching writing code. And that's another thing that may increase your value if you run into someone who loves TDD. I, on my, my stance on TDD is that it is a good technique and is one that I would, and that I guess I should give a brief description of test-driven development. The idea here is that you write a failing unit test. It's a, it's a, it's a essentially a three-step process. It's red, green, refactor. So red, you write a fail, failing unit test. Green, you write a piece of code to make it stop failing. And then refactor, you, you rewrite what you wrote to see if there's a better way of going about it, or you move on to the next step of that failing test. And the idea here is that you write the test before you write the code so that there's always test and it forces you to think more about your code and what ends up happening if you and there's other ways of doing it i i do sometimes i do tdd sometimes i don't um generally i have a you know somewhere between 90 and 100 percent test coverage on anything i write and the idea there is that i usually um deliver it by functionality. So I might write a single function. I then, if it's a public function, I'd then go and write some tests behind it, think about the edge cases, all that sort of stuff. Um, too often developers only write for the happy path and they don't think about the unhappy path, which is life. Uh, no, <laughs> not too dramatic. But um, the testing aspect is one of those items that really I think when you have a strong grasp of it, takes you from that junior to senior level and showcases that and is when you run into people who are in uh, larger organizations they are going to value it quite well although i shouldn't say that for everything i interviewed at a bank and they didn't do any sort of testing which astounded me i didn't take that job because again um i know a death march when i hear one <laughs> um no death marches for me i um I'm de that's a young man's game past 30 no more death marches. If you're like 21 and you, you want to just be on the death march, 25, do it. Past 30, no death marches, all right? We got shit to do. And it ain't dying for the for the company cause. <laughs> um, but testing is a fantastic thing to pick up. It will increase your skill level. It will make you a better developer. It will make increase your value and increase your salary. I, I would say that there's many things that will increase your salary. Testing is one of them. Um, followed up by probably that's my number one by far followed up by probably really understanding the solid principles um, some good design patterns and um, clean code but testing will make you more money it will allow you to avoid the death marches which that's probably my number one goal with roles now is avoiding death marches because if you've heard me talk about companies and all that sort of stuff and it, it's it's sad to say because there's so many people out there. Oh, you don't want to work in corporate America, this and that. And there's some truth to it. I would say about seven out of ten places suck. <laughs> and um, a lot of what people want is not necessarily working for themselves. They want to work like remote or they want to um, want to have flexibility. And nowadays it's a little bit easier to get remote roles. I do full remote, for instance. And it's a little bit easier to have flexibility in general. Um but you need to make sure you find those good companies. And that is one of my go-to things that I ask to gauge their response. And oftentimes what it leads to for the ones who say that, that's, well, we don't have time. We don't have time to do that. We don't have time to do this. And um, that sounds like a death march. And it often is. And usually they're the ones that are going to pay you less because they, they don't. It's, it's a weird it's a weird thing and I, I was trying to explain this to April the other day about how a lot of software departments don't respect their developers um, they're almost to a degree angry that they have to have you uh, because you're an integral part of their business and they don't want to admit it to themselves at times um, and it's it's 
it's I find it similar to this. Like you know how people are somewhat skeptical of mechanics when they give quotes and estimate on their cars and stuff like that, and a lot of the that skept skepticism stems from them not understanding um, maintenance repair and car repair and stuff like that. I think a lot of businesses look at devs in the similar fashion where they don't really understand what you do. They don't really care. All they care about is their feature. And a lot of times they just think you're bullshitting them. <laughs> and because of that, there's a little bit of a, this is again, seven out of 10. So there's three out of 10 places that are good, which means that you're going to have to jump jobs a couple of times to find a good place. Um, and hopefully by then you were not so salty and burnt out as I've seen a lot of good developers become, um, which is why you have to ask questions like, Hey, do you write tests? How do you test your code? Oh, you don't have any time to test your code? Oh, you you guys are have a really rapid schedule and super agile? Anytime someone says super agile, run like hell. We're super agile. Oh, okay, so the requirements change daily? Uh, we could do a whole video about super agile um, in, a, uh, in, uh, in the future. That seems to be the... Um, that seems to be the go-to excuse for every every business. We're super agile. So so you can just change the requirements and not extend the deadline? Is that what's going on? <laughs> it's such a meme at times. Uh, but anyhow, guys, so um, that would be something I would focus on if you're looking to go and get those big salary gains. And also if you're looking to make sure that you don't end up in the same crappy company that you're in and go and find a good one because uh, they are out there contrary popular belief but uh with all that being said thank you so much for watching the video if you're interested in any of my courses there is a link to all of them in the description below as well as the books i recommend and things like that please subscribe if you haven't already um on that hashtag road to a hundred thousand which would be nice i'll see you guys next time bye Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.